everyone, I'm Emily from More To Me Designs and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be doing a sewing tutorial with you guys on the Can Do Crafts zipper pouch in five sizes. This is what she looks like, she's so cute. I did wax canvas on the bottom, quilt cotton on the top, and then I did quilt cotton as the interior as well. I will have um, links below on where I got my wax canvas, where I got this adorable little kitty fabric, um, where I got my zippers and all that kind of stuff. The pattern you do have to purchase, I will not be giving out any measurements today, you have to purchase a pattern from Can Do Crafts on Etsy and I will have a direct link to her below. She was so nice to supply me with a coupon code to give to you guys so you can get a little discount off her patterns. So use the code MORETOME20 at checkout to receive a discount off her patterns when you download these adorable little zipper pouch templates. Can so, Do Crafts is just such a great pattern writer. She's awesome for beginners. And if you love today's sewing tutorial and you love this little pouch, I highly suggest going to check out her Etsy page and look at other patterns she has. Now that you have a discount code, more to me 20, she has so many, so many cute patterns on there. Honestly, you're probably gonna end up purchasing all of them at some point. <laughs> I'm almost there. I just love her patterns. But I can't wait to get started. I'm gonna be doing wax canvas and quilt cotton just like this one. And I think you guys are really gonna love the one I'm sewing up today. All right, let's get started. So the materials you're going to need today are going to be um, fabric for your main pieces, your lining pieces, and your base pieces. So today what I am using is cotton, quilt cotton just for the top, which is the main piece. I interface those with SF 101. And then for the lining, I'm also just using quilt cotton. That I interface with SF 101. And then for the base, I'm using waxed canvas, and I did not interface this. This is a very thick fabric, um, it's durable, and it actually gives off this sort of rippled effect when you start to use it more, and it just gives the bag such a fun, unique quality, and I really enjoy using this. I used waxed canvas on this zipper pouch as well, so that is what I'm using today. I, like I said, interface the main pieces and the lining pieces with SF 101. Um, I just feel like it gives the bag such a nice feel overall without adding any extra weight. I know she talks about that in her pattern directions as well. Um, so you'll see that the top is, you know, just light and flimsy, but the base with the wax canvas gives it nice stability, and so it can still stand up on its own. And I am doing the size large pouch today. So if you are going to be doing the exact same one as we, you're gonna wanna cut your pattern pieces for large. Um, you can see, I use mine for makeup, um, but I pulled it into the sewing room today to show you like it can fit all your craft supplies. The size large can even fit a full pair of scissors. So it is a great size little zipper pouch, and I think you guys are really going to enjoy making it. Um, what I ended up using for a zipper is just a metal zipper and I just got these from Zip It on Etsy um, and they are wonderful. I really enjoy using these. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our main pieces that are already all interfaced and you're going to take a base piece and you're going to lay them right sides together which is the pretty sides together and then you're going to line them up on this top half right here and you're going to clip those together. What we're going to do is we're going to take that to the sewing machine and we're going to sew a half an inch seam allowance all the way across and you're going to do that to each piece. So I'm just going to go ahead and clip these together as well. And I'm going to take that to the sewing machine. Okay, so I used white thread so you guys could see what I did there, but I did a half inch seam allowance from the top. Now we're going to take this to the ironing board and give it a press, and then I'm going to show you that we're going to top stitch. Okay, so we're at the ironing board, and what we're going to do is we're going to press the seam allowance towards the base, and then we're going to do a top stitch, a 1 8 inch top stitch across the whole top of this base to seal it nice and make it look nice and neat. So that is what that looks like, if you can see that well. And then the back 
can see the seam allowance is pressed down. So that is what we're going to do. So that one's all prepped. What I did was I had the base side up. I ironed it just quick. Little press. And then I finger pressed it flat. Just like that. Go ahead and get your iron back. Another press. And this is what you should have. So this flap is facing towards the base. And we're going to top stitch a 1 8 inch seam allowance along the top here. So we're going to do the top stitch now and I wanted to mention is using a coordinating thread is just going to be your friend here and it's going to look a lot nicer. Um, if you like to have a very nice bold bright stitching then use you know whatever color you want but I'm going to use a coordinating thread color to match um, the base fabric here. So we're going to do a 1 8 inch seam allowance. <laughs> To attach the zipper. So what I really love about Can Do Crafts patterns is she definitely likes to teach you how to do things the neat way. A lot of patterns will tell you they want you to sandwich your zipper and the lining together and do it all in one step. We're going to just do a little extra sewing today just so we make sure everything's nice and neat and we can really see what we're doing and that's what she states in the pattern as well and I really love that tip. So what we're going to do is we're going to take one of our exterior pieces and we're going to lay our 9 inch zipper facing down. So the zipper is facing down on the right side of the fabric. We're going to go ahead and we're going to clip, I like to use clips, you can use pins, but I'm going to clip our zipper here. Now, I highly, highly suggest using a zipper foot, especially if you're using a metal zipper. A zipper foot is going to be your best friend for your sewing machine. What we're going to do is we're going to sew a 1 fourth inch seam allowance along the top attaching our zipper and you're going to see me stop about right to this part right here um, where I'm almost to the end of the zipper and I'm actually going to take the piece out, move my zipper down and then finish and you'll see how I do that. That is just kind of how I do it. Um, I don't like to try to make it so the zipper foot is you know, moving around the bulk of this zipper head right here. I really just like to stop then move it and then put it back under my needle and continue sewing. I just feel like it gives it a much neater finish. So you'll see what I mean there when I show you how I'm sewing it. Okay, so now we have the zipper foot on. I'm going to start right at the end, press your foot down, and you'll notice you have a zipper foot and you're doing a quarter inch seam allowance. It's going to fit perfectly right down the side between the edge of the fabric and where the zipper teeth are. So I'm going to go ahead and sew a straight stitch here. I'm still on the 2.5 um, stitch length. to stop here I'm going to cut my thread so you can see I have my straight stitch going across but I stopped almost to the zipper head I'm going to move my zipper to the back it's all the way back now so I only have this piece I'm gonna put my zipper foot right back where it was I'm gonna back stitch and then start going and then go right to the end slow. You want everything to look nice and neat. I'm going to go ahead and clip that thread. Okay, so now we have that zipper attached to one side. Take another outside panel, lay that right side up. Going to take the other side of your zipper, the second half, and you're going to lay that 
facing down just like we just did for the other outside panel and go ahead and clip. Make sure when you have this clipped and you're getting ready to take it to the sewing machine that each side is lined up and it all looks nice and even. And then we're going to go ahead and do a quarter inch seam allowance along the top and then we're going to attach our lining pieces. So let's go to the sewing machine. So going this direction, I'm actually going to start stitching right here. Like I said, I like to stitch as much as I can and then go back, move the zipper and then stitch. I just feel like it makes everything look so much cleaner, straighter, and you're not um, risking, you know, your foot getting caught in the zipper head, breaking a needle or any of that. This is just how I do it and I feel like it works really nicely. So I'm going to go ahead and start here. This is where the zipper head is. So I'm a good probably inch and a half away from where the zipper head is and that's where I'm starting. to move my zipper almost all the way down so it's out of the way and I'm gonna go back and then start from the beginning back stitch at the beginning and end and then end right where that stitch started So now you should have something that looks like this. So you have your zipper attached to the two outside panels. So it looks like this. We're going to add our lining pieces now. So take one lining piece, have that facing right side up on your cutting table. Take one end and put that right on top of your lining piece so that your lining and your outside panel are sandwiching that zipper together. Go ahead and clip. So you should have something that looks like this now. So it's your lining piece, outside piece, zipper is sandwiched inside there. And then we're gonna go ahead and do a quarter inch seam allowance. You'll see that you had a previous stitch there from your outside panel. Just go ahead and follow that and um, you know that you will be on track and you won't be running into your zipper or anything. Again, I'm going to stop right where I did before, take it off the sewing machine, unzip it, and then continue the rest of the way so I know I'm avoiding any um, colliding with needle and the zipper head and I just know that everything is getting a nice clean stitch. first lining piece is attached you should have something that looks like this we have outside panel outside panel zipper and then one lining piece attached what we're going to do is just attach another lining piece so and we're going to take the side of the zipper that has not been attached to any lining yet we're going to take that and we're going to put it right to the top of the remaining lining piece and go ahead and pin continue making sure that all the sides are nice and lined up and straight and then we're going to just repeat the step we just did, one uh, quarter inch seam allowance all the way across, and uh, we're going to be done attaching our lining. Is all attached so now you should have something that looks like this you have your zipper in the middle let me fold it all out for you so you have your two lining pieces zipper right down the middle two outside panels zipper right down the middle all right so what we're going to do is we're going to top stitch each side right here 1 8 inch seam allowance but we are going to make sure our lining is folded and out of the way when we do that so when you have your zipper pouch 
down on the sewing machine, there's nothing behind it, no lining pieces, nothing. Everything is to the left side, then you just have your one exterior piece. You're going to go ahead and do a 1 8 inch seam, seam allowance all the way around. I'm going to go ahead and give this just a little press with my iron before I take it to the sewing machine just so everything's nice and crisp and even and um, do a 1 8 inch seam allowance. Alright, so we did the 1 8 inch seam allowance along the whole top edge by the zipper and I had made sure that my lining piece was out of the way. So we're going to go ahead and repeat that right to the other side. So go ahead, lay it flat, give it a good press around here, make sure that nothing is behind it. We're only press or we're only stitching the outside panel, we're not stitching the lining to it. So I'm going to go ahead and give this another good press and take it to the sewing machine. Alright, so you should have something that looks like this now. So we have our top stitch down 1 8 inch on each side of the zipper. Got your lining pieces. Alright, so we're almost done guys. So if you have a little tag or a business name that you would like to put on your bag, this is the time to do it. I um, put my little leather tags. I got my tags from Engrave Me Treasures on Etsy. I highly, highly suggest her. She is wonderful to work with. She's super quick to ship um, and she just does a beautiful job. These are leather tags. And I'm going to go ahead and add my tag on now. This is an order for somebody that is patiently waiting for their bag and I want to make sure that my name is on it so they know who made it. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Okay, now that we have our little tag attached, we are going to open up our zipper about three-fourths of the way, halfway. Just make sure it's open so it's easy for you during the turning process because if the zipper is not open, you won't be able to turn the bag. So you will be doing some seam ripping if you forget this step. Um, so go ahead, open up your zipper, and then take the two outer panels and put them right sides together, and then take the lining panels and put those right sides together. What we're going to do is we're going to do a half inch seam allowance around the entire bag, but we are going to leave a four and a half inch gap at the bottom of the lining piece. So whether it be a pin or a pen mark, anything measuring four and a half inches, making sure that you are keeping a gap here because this is how we're going to turn our bag. So go ahead and we're going to pin everything. Now, making sure that you pin everything even you do have panels that are matching here. You're going to want them to line up. That's going to be really, really important for you when the bag is finished. So I like to connect those first when I'm clipping or pinning. I like to take your two base pieces and then your two top cotton pieces, making sure that everything is nice and even sandwiched together. So I like to pin that first. Then I'll do the same to the other side. Pin those together. And then you're going to want your, your zippers are going to want to fall this way anyways, but you're going to want your zipper um, teeth to face towards the lining. So pin those together on the side. And the more pins, the better. It keeps everything in place, making sure nothing's shifting while you're sewing. Also, when we are sewing around, I should have mentioned this before and I'm sorry I would have got there, but do not sew inside these little notches here. Leave those open. Those are going to be for boxing your corners after we sew everything. So make sure you're only stitching here, here. Let me zoom you out here so you can see. All right, we're only stitching here, 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 but we're leaving a four and a half inch gap and then you're stitching along this edge. So you'll see when I take it to the sewing machine, but you're gonna wanna do a half inch seam allowance on all of those. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and clip my lining. I prefer clips. Um, I think I may have said that in a previous tutorial or on a live. I don't really re use pins anymore. Um, I love using clips. I just feel like they kinda keep everything nice together. All right, so I am going to find a four and a half inch mark here. So it's about four and a half inches. So I'm gonna keep a clip on each side so that I know to keep this gap open. Now be aware you are sewing, if you're, especially if you're using a metal zipper. 
You used a half inch seam allowance, so you should be right next to that zipper end there, but you're just gonna wanna double check when you get to this point that you're not gonna be running into that zipper stop because it will break your needle, it's metal. So you're gonna go ahead and just check to make sure that's out of the way. You've got a half inch seam allowance still, so just continue. So like to stop here and just make sure that I'm still lined up with those those base edges to make sure everything's nice and clean and continue stopped leaving the corner open go ahead half inch seam allowance Okay, so this may seem weird, but this is actually one of my favorite steps in a pattern, and that is the debulking process. So what we're going to do is we're going to trim down these edges so that they are a one-fourth inch seam allowance instead of a half inch. This is just debulking, so when you're turning and everything, it's just going to be much easier for you. So I'm going to go ahead and just clean everything up on the sides, trim down to a quarter inch. It just feels so good to get all that bulk. When you get to the bottom, however, where the lining is, only trim to where the stitch stops and then clip, leaving this still the full length. I like to leave it that way. I feel like when you are sealing the bottom as the very last step, it just makes it easier for you to iron and really get a good stitch right there. So now that that's all debulked, I am also going to just trim around where each zipper end is. At like a 45 degree angle, I'm going to cut, don't cut your stitches, but just cut the bulk. So it's a lot easier for you to turn when you are um, turning the bag. This is where the zipper ends are. You'll see how she does this in the pattern as well if you want a cl more close-up of that. But I just debulked everything, trimmed it all up. So the next thing we're going to do is box our corners. The easiest way to box your corners is to press your seam allowances open just like that. The camera will focus. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> there you go. So you're going to open up your seam allowances on each edge and you're going to meet those points just like that hope you can see that well so you're gonna go ahead if you need to you can even press that on your ironing board to really make those seams be open but usually a finger press will do it and go ahead and clip and zoom me in just a little bit do the same thing to the other side Open up those seams, give it a good finger press, line everything up. And when we take this to the sewing machine, we're going to do a half inch seam allowance right down that box corner. So I'm going to go ahead and get my other two corner or other three corners clipped and we will go to the sewing machine. And before I take this to the sewing machine, I just really want to quickly give you guys a great tip that she explains in the pattern as well. If you wanted to make sure this is very accurate so all of your corners are the same length, I know with zipper pouches that are small like this, even if you're off just like a half an inch, it can make your zipper pouch be a little wonky and unbalanced. So if you want to make sure you are very neat and very accurate, um, you can measure a half an inch from the edge of the box corner and mark a line. Do that to all four corners and then you can measure that line and make sure that they're all even in the same length so it'll be nice and neat for you when you take it to the sewing machine. I have sewn this bag a lot so I am not going to mark all four corners and measure. Um, I'm pretty confident that I can get it all the same length um, but if you are a beginner never done this pouch before um, I highly suggest doing that step just to save you some work make sure everything's nice and neat and measured correctly.
inch box corner to a quarter inch, just like we did for the exterior of the bag. Okay, now we get to turn our bag right side out. So right through this little open hole in the bottom of the lining, I'm gonna bring everything right out. This is the best part of sewing, to finally see all of your work to come together. You also probably hold your breath because it's, it's very nerve-wracking to make sure that you get everything matched up. Alright, make sure that your sides are all lined up. Those look great. Alright, so if everything looks good, we're going to go ahead and seal the bottom of our bag. So you have this big hole on the bottom of your lining now. So what you're going to do is you're going to tuck the raw edges inside and you're going to iron, give it a good press. Do that really quick. So I gave that a good press and I clipped it. So what we're going to do is we're going to top stitch as close to the edge as we can, maybe even a little under one eighth of an inch. So this is just going to be enough to just seal this. Um, if you're nervous, you don't think you're going to catch it all, feel free to just do a quarter inch seam allowance, that's fine. Um, but to make it look nice and neat, try to get as close to that edge as you can. So we're going to go ahead and take this to the sewing machine. Okay, so you've tucked your lining inside of your pouch, you gave it a good press, and your pouch is finished. Now, I like to add these little leather zipper pulls, so I'm going to show you how to do that really quickly. Um, I get all of my leather from Hobby Lobby. Um, they have a really, really good selection at their store. Um, I try to see, you know, what color I think is best. Sometimes I like to go with, like, just regular brown, but I am really loving this blue. I really love how that looks so I think I'm gonna go with that so I'm gonna go ahead and cut a five inch piece one two three four five all right you're gonna take your zipper you zoom you in alrighty so you're gonna take your zipper and you're going to put the leather end through so it looks like this. I'm going to pull it around the back. So it looks like that. And then you're going to pull your long end around again, going through that loop. So basically just tying a knot around the zipper end. Gather both end pieces and pull. And then you have this little knot, a little zipper pull on the end of your zipper. And it is so stinking cute. I just love the little finish it gives to it. So adorable. Let me focus the camera for you. There it is. All right, guys. Here she is. She's done. And she's stinking cute. And I'm obsessed with her. And it's going to be so hard to send her off. I literally want 80 of these around my house just so I can continue staring at them because they're so stinking cute. All right. I hope you guys really liked that video. I'm so anxious to hear what you guys thought. <laughs> feel free to comment below if there's anything I could have did better. Um, feel free to like this video if you just liked it. Um, subscribe if you want to see some videos in the future. Um, be kind. I am a new tuber. That is a new YouTuber combined. A new tuber. I made it up just now, but that's what I am. So <laughs> Uh, recorded YouTube tutorials are very new to me and so I am so thankful Can Do Crafts gave me her blessing to do this today. Thank you for having some faith in me to give your pattern some justice. <laughs> I hope I did a good job. I hope you guys love it. Um, yeah, feel free to comment below and um, yeah, follow me on Facebook and on Instagram. I'd love to hear from you guys. I'd love to see pictures of the ones that you guys have made and yeah, I hope you guys love the sewing tutorial. I had a lot of fun making it and I'm already super excited for my next sewing tutorial. So happy sewing and I will catch you guys next time.
Bye.